All right, here we are, streaming live again from the Garden of Eden. It really is, you know, it's, it's sort of a cliche name, the Garden of Eden, but, you know, I mean, I almost never leave here. I mean, I just don't leave. There's nowhere to go. You know, it's like we have everything here, the <laughs> highest quality, the abundance, the love, the beauty, the freedom. Like, I can do whatever I want to, whenever I want, however I want. And there's just way more than enough of all of it. And it's all of this, you know, super just delicious quality, you know. And the people that are able to actually be here for extended periods of time can feel that, can feel that power. You know, you taste it in the food. It's just that, that undescribable flavor, that undescribable quality that you can feel. You know, you can breathe it in the air. You know, it's like whatever you're partaking in, you can sort of feel that magical, special flavor. So, I'm happy to be here. This is where I want to be. I'm happy that you're here. I hope this is where you want to be, because you don't have to be here. You can do whatever you want. Now, with that being said, I am going to say that these, these lectures, these exposures that we're doing here live, you know, this is, this is the cutting edge. This is the leading edge. This is, like, this is it. Right? And so what I'm going to talk about tonight is education. And education is really, 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 really important because really we are a product of our education. We are a product of our education. And education, in most people's mind, consists of school. School is education. Even if it's homeschool, it's still home school. There's still school there. But education is everything, right? The TV that we watch, whether we consider it education or not, we are being exposed to information. And that information is affecting us. Every single thing we see, every single thing we hear, everything we touch, everything we feel is, is information. And that information is interacting with who we are. And who we are is slightly different, and so that exact same information is going to be slightly different for each person. But that information is affecting who we are, and so I also consider that education. Now, because I'm extremely conscious, I'm aware that every single moment is an opportunity for for the greatest moment, is an opportunity to be more conscious, more alive, more connected, more inspired than ever, right? So by really milking that, by really milking that opportunity, evolution is highly accelerated. Evolution is highly accelerated. It's just like every day I'm stronger, I'm more alive, I'm more focused, I'm more abundant, I'm more clear than I was the day before. And so Really, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, I am educating myself with my relationship with the world. The way that I'm standing right now, the way that I'm standing right now is, is, a, is because of many years of developing my posture. I've been educating my body on what does it feel like to have chi, to have prana, to have energy flowing through my body freely, powerfully, and abundantly. Right? So the way that I'm standing right now, it's no coincidence, it's no chance. I'm actually standing this way consciously, and I've been fine-tuning this very subtly for many years. For many years. And I'm doing that with conscious feedback. I'm feeling my body, and then I'm experimenting. Right? Taking a breath deeper, you know, pulling my muscles in a different way. You know, I'm feeling my body, and as I'm feeling it, I'm like, okay, that feels better, that feels worse. This feels optimal, this feels less optimal. And that's how I know the real truth of what kind of posture is more ideal. And on a daily basis, my posture is getting better. My muscles are getting stronger. They're getting more flexible. They're getting, you know, they've got more endurance. Like, my body is working better every day. I'm not getting older. I'm not getting older. My body's actually working better. And that's because every day I'm fine-tuning my body. To me, that's education. Now, most people consider education what you're taught. And to me, that's quite potentially the worst education. The worst education you could possibly have because instead of tuning in, instead of going within yourself and consciously engaging the world, being fully responsible and liable for that, 
and then fine tuning, right? Making adjustments, experimenting, failing, and then going again, failing, going again, failing, going again, right? If you're, if you're, if you're alive, if you're conscious, if you're responsible, every single time you fail, you're going to be more powerful, you're going to be more clear, you're going to be more connected than you were before. And so it's not really a failure. It's a part of the process. It's part of the fine-tuning process. Right? So, if we're aware that, okay, I am fully capable, I can do anything, I can do anything, I can do anything, I can do anything, well, that's a foundation where anything is possible. Whereas if we have the foundation of, well, I'm pretty old, it's pretty hard to learn new things, or I was born in this generation, you know, so I'm not adapted to these types of things, or I've already spent, you know, four years in school learning this, I don't have the time or the energy to learn this, or, you know, oh, you know, I'm, you know, born at this day and at this time, the, you know, the, the, this, the planets were in this alignment, so, you know, I'm not able to learn these types of things because I'm not this type of person, or, oh, you know, this requires a certain level of IQ or intelligence and I don't have that, or this requires this dedication, blah, 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 I don't have that, or... I don't have the money to learn this, or I don't have the time, like, that's a lot of limitation, a lot of limitation, a lot of limitation, a lot of limitation. But the whole school system, the whole education system is set up with that, right? It's set up on this schedule where you go to first grade, then you go to second grade, and then you go to third grade. Now, I've heard of people that actually skip grades, but it's extremely rare. Most people don't skip grades. They just go to first grade, they go to second grade, they go to third grade, they go to fourth grade. 5th grade, 6th grade, 7th grade, and that whole time, you're sort of like, most people are just sort of doing the minimum to get by, you know, and even if you're someone that needs straight A's, you're still doing the minimum to still get straight A's. Most people, almost nobody wakes up and they're like, oh yes, I get to go to school today. They show up at school and they're like, okay, I'm ready to learn, I'm ready to learn, I'm ready to learn, and they're taking notes about every single thing, and the next class, I'm ready to learn, ready to learn, and they get home, and then they go on the computer, and they're like, okay, I want to know more than the teacher knows by tomorrow. Most people are like, oh, there's no homework? Okay. You know, I'm going to watch TV, I'm going to play a video game, I'm going to go play with my dolls, I'm going to go, you know, smoke pot with my friends, blah, blah, blah. Now, finally, I'm free, I can go live. So, it's not necessarily that school is bad. It's not necessarily that school is bad. But here's the fact, is that I haven't met a single person, I've never met a single person who has told me I loved waking up every day to an alarm or at a time that I had to wake up. I've never met a single person that told me that. I've met a lot of people who say, oh yeah, school was good for me, I liked school, you know, blah, 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 but it's just a justification in the mind to justify the story because the story is actually so painful, so devastating, that the mind can't even acknowledge even go to that dark place of how detrimental it really is. So we're justifying that story, oh yeah, I had fun, I liked my friends, blah, 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 blah. So I've never met a single person who says, yeah, I love waking up at the alarm, I love waking up, I love waking up every single day, every single day for 24 years. And then you really, you, I mean, you do it for your whole adult life as well, because then after school, it's a job. You know, it's the same thing, it's already been conditioned in. So I've never met anyone that says that. I've never met anyone that says, I love sitting down at a bell and shutting up at the bell and having to shut up and pay attention, otherwise I get a detention. I loved every single class I had. I loved every single teacher I had. I loved all the homework I had. I loved all the tests. I loved all the, you know, all the projects. I loved that. I loved that. I loved being made fun of. I loved, you know, the bullies. I loved you know, the peer pressure, you know, I loved, uh, you know, all of that stuff. I've never heard anyone that says they love all that. Well, then you may say, well, you know, life isn't perfect. You know, you can't just do whatever you want. You know, you've got to learn to fit in with life. You've got to learn to fit in with people. You've got to learn to deal with society. You know, you don't get to do whatever you want. Okay, well, if that's what you want to believe, that's fine. But see, what I'm here to tell you is that actually, actually, the possibility does exist that we can do whatever we want all the time. That possibility actually does exist. And simultaneously, there's nothing, not a single thing in school that you can't get outside of school. Not a single thing. I haven't met a single person that has tell, told me something that's important about school that I haven't told them how they can get another way. And one of the biggest things is, they say, socialization. You know, it's really important for kids to get social, socialization while they're in school. 
Well, my number one response is, why would you want your child socializing with robots, with slaves, with drones? Right? Because every single child in school has already been broken, just like a horse. There's no difference between a child in school and a horse in a stable. That horse has already learned, I can't do whatever I want. If my master kicks me with the spurs, I go. And if the master pulls on my reins, I stop. Otherwise, I get whipped. It's the same thing for a child. If I don't wake up in the morning, I get spanked. I get grounded. You know, I get locked in the closet. I get put in timeout. I get put in the corner. I get yelled at. I get screamed at. You know, punishment is different in, in different families, but punishment is punishment. You know, and as far as I'm concerned, there's really a very little difference between, you know, being hit with a belt and being put in a corner. You still don't have choice. You're being told you will conform, you will comply, whether you like it or not, or else. All right, so the children in school, they've already been broken. They know that if they don't sit down at the alarm, they get in trouble. They know that if they don't get up at the bell, they get in trouble. They know that if they don't do their homework, they get in trouble. They know that if they ask questions, they get in trouble. I mean, I have literally heard stories, not like stories on the internet, but stories from people who have actually been in school, and they've actually challenged a teacher on a certain question or a certain subject or a certain bit of information, and they've actually been right. And yet the teacher wouldn't and or couldn't acknowledge the truth and just pretended like, oh, you're a child, you don't know anything about that. And the child was actually right. I've, I've heard stories about that, right? So the whole system of school, like, there's not anything wrong with going to a place and being with your friends. Obviously, that would be amazing, right? There's nothing wrong with learning. Obviously, learning is amazing. There's nothing wrong with physics, per se. There's nothing wrong with history, per se, right? There's nothing wrong with mathematics, per se. But see, here's the thing, is that when you go to a school, and it doesn't matter whether it's a private school or a public school, a school, they have standardized testing. They have standardized curriculums. They're approved curriculums. Right? They're approved by the powers that be. Well, I know for a fact, and whether you believe me or not, it doesn't matter. I know for a fact that anthropologists actually believe that the pyramids, and I'm not talking about like children here, but I'm talking about like professors like the most respected anthropologists in the world that have been anthropologists for 40 years, right, that have PhDs. There's anthropologists that actually believe that the pyramids were built by farmers 4,000 years ago using vines and copper tools. <laughs> 